Special thanks to Boxu for sponsoring this video. More on them later. I haven't made a Dragon Ball video in a hot minute, and just as I come back to see how things are going, the community is on fire! And because of one chapter that was released during the Granola arc, and okay, well, it's not all because of that, it's, it's a long story, but in short, this latest development could risk ruining all of Dragon Ball, but how you might be wondering. The year is 1990. Dragon Ball is at the peak of its powers during the Frieza saga, and the very first Dragon Ball Z TV special is released. Bardock, the father of Goku. Appearing in just two panels during the original manga's run, Bardock, along with his television special, cemented the Saiyan as not just a fan favorite with a harrowing backstory, but also one which served to greatly elevate the main character of Goku and indeed the story post Raditz, directly adding to the notion that it's not what you are, but indeed who you are that ultimately determines your fate. But Akira Toriyama couldn't just leave that alone. He had to put his own spin on it, a spin that has been spinning out of control since 2014, and over this short video, I want to illustrate exactly exactly what the massive potential problem Dragon Ball is facing truly is. And it all stems from a character whose backstory stands to impact not just the future of this series, not only the Bardock character himself, but along with that teases the collapse of the very foundations the entire series we all know and love are built upon. So let's see if Bardock is really going to be the character to ruin Dragon Ball. <laughs> Before you ruin something, there has to be something worthy of being ruined in the first place. So, what was it that the fans loved? Bardock, the father of Goku, 1990. Let's turn our clocks back to October 17th, 1990. Our heroes are in the middle of fighting Frieza in the manga, all the while this non-canon TV special gets released, telling the story of how Bardock, the father of Goku, tried and failed to stop the annihilation of his people at the hands of Frieza. While not written by Akira Toriyama, the story itself bolstered many of the themes expressed in the series while adding a much more complex backstory to the events of early Dragon Ball, which by extension helped the main character, Goku. Largely, the point of Goku's character during the Saiyan and Frieza sagas was to illustrate and highlight the differences between him and the Saiyan race from which he originated. That the nurturing he received as a child from the likes of his grandpa Gohan and the lessons that were imparted onto him through his early years ended up being the difference makers in Goku's life, ultimately allowing him to achieve heights the comparably cold Raditz, Nappa and Vegeta couldn't reach despite their elite status. And while the TV special itself isn't perfect with the seeing into the future aspect of it raising some red flags for me, Bardock the father of Goku still managed to coherently tell the story of a man that was once loyal to free journeying to stand alone against him. We learn about what he appreciates, what he dislikes, and we are shown how the Saiyan's nature helped to lead to their own downfall and ultimately that effort and desire alone isn't enough when you stand in opposition to Frieza. All themes and sentiments that are present in the original manga ultimately offering more depth to the story. So much so that Akira Toriyama really took notice. Up until this point, Bardock hadn't appeared in the manga beyond Raditz's comment that Goku looked like him. But as a result of Toriyama's adoration of this TV special, he incorporated it into its very own manga. Although only appearing in two panels, they depict the TV special's events right down to the design he himself had a hand in creating. And two decades later in 2011, Toriyama would once again reiterate his love for the story with the following quote. When I saw the finished episode, I remembered feeling a good bit of admiration. With my work, I prefer lighthearted fare, so I have a tendency to avoid serious material. Even if I had written about the same past, it would have become much lighter in tone by far. Thanks to this, I felt as though even Dragon Ball had been given a little more depth. However, another quote from that time also gave a subtle indication as to what awaited us in the not so distant future. He said, I really like the story of Bardock, Goku's father. It's quite dramatic, and the kind of story I absolutely wouldn't draw if it were me. It was like watching a different kind of Dragon Ball in a good way, so I thought it was nice. Fast forward to 2014, and we finally get Akira Toriyama's take on the backstory for Bardock and the origins of his son Kakarot in the 16-page collection entitled Dragon Ball Minus. And Toriyama wasn't kidding. This was totally different to Bardock, the father of Goku, and unfortunately, not in a good way. 
Released within Jaco the Galactic Patrolman's volume, the contents of Dragon Ball Minus served as the first indication that all was not well with the character of Bardock or indeed the broader Dragon Ball world. There's a lot to cover concerning this short story and while I will be touching on my main issues in this video, there's a 28 minute long dissection of Dragon Ball Minus by the fantastic Mr. Fusion that I highly recommend you check out if you want to cover all your bases on this material. However, to cut a long story short, unlike Bardock, the father of Goku from 1990, Dragon Ball Minus isn't so much a story as it is expository information that changes our perspective on the greater story of Bardock and Goku as a character on fundamental levels. With its main issues arising not only in how it disappoints us through Bardock's actions, but more troublingly, how it manages to retroactively change our perception of the main character Goku, I would argue for the worse. Goku's pure-hearted nature for the entirety of Dragon Ball stood as a monument to what made him special as a character. Having gone through all of early Dragon Ball, overcoming great threats, saving the world from countless horrible monsters, it was later revealed by Raditz at the start of the Saiyan arc that Goku was intended to have been a greater monster than all of them, and in fact should have laid waste to that world by now. However, thanks to who Goku is, he specifically prevented that fate from befalling the world he now calls home resulting in the climax of the Saiyan arc concerning itself with a clash of a lower class commoner, ultimately besting the so-called elite or upper echelon of the Saiyan race, Vegeta. Once again, thanks to who Goku was, he was able to gain the skills that someone like Vegeta would never have been receptive to learning in the first place and would never have been capable of making the friendships that would make the difference in the end. Dragon Ball Minus, however, strips the story of this and opts instead to make Goku more remarkable and much more like a Superman type character. It takes the lower class warrior no one expected anything from which made Dragon Ball Z interesting and replaces it with a main character who was expected to be the way that he ultimately was and changes an unremarkable backstory into one that specifically was special, removing any of the dramatic weight that existed there prior to this reveal. Now, there are plenty of retroactive and broad changes Toriyama made to the story of Dragon Ball during its run, like Raditz revealing that Goku was an alien the entire time. This absolutely changed our perspective to what came prior to the reveal, however, facilitated and added so much more for the future of the story. Comparatively, this choice made in Dragon Ball Minus only served to detract from what was there before without offering anything new for the future. That was until Dragon Ball Super The Granola Arc 2022. Before I go any deeper on Bardock, I think it's time for a snack break thanks to my friends over at Boxu. If you're not aware, Boxu is a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight to your door from Japan. But what makes Boxu pretty sweet is that every month it features a brand new theme that'll not only provide a fun little gourmet journey through Japan, but also teach you some of the fascinating aspects of the culture. The first one you'll receive is called Seasons of Japan, which is a tasty adventure through Japan's four seasons to give you an idea of what a year of Boxu would be like, but after that you'll jump right in with our monthly themed boxes. This month, Boxu is celebrating its 6th birthday and have picked out its members favourite snacks to include. It's a sort of greatest hits of what Boxu has offered over the years with some real celebratory snacks. I think for me, my favourite was probably the curry flavoured potato snack. I love a good crisp and these ones are basically giant ones like crackers that taste exactly like that delicious katsu curry sauce I had all over my visit to Japan. Looking into the booklet that comes with each Boxu, it seems these are from the Aichi Prefecture. It's a pretty informative addition to the box and actually teaches you Japanese words Words too. I'm sure the One Piece fans watching will recognize Fusen. It's an awesome service, so if you want to try some of these tasty Japanese snacks and support my channel, click the link in the description, use my code NOTMARK15 to get $15 off your first Boxu order. Like, no joke, he's actually really good. Go on, try it. While this section has, in my opinion, the most egregious implications for the series at large, I will say that as of writing this video, the arc itself isn't yet complete and while it is unlikely, it is still possible for things to revert and come around at the very end to make sense. But with that said, what about this new material is causing waves in the community? I have plenty of thoughts on the granola arc at large as it currently stands, however, I will be leaving that for its own video once the arc itself concludes. For the purposes of this video, I will be looking at the contents of the following chapters. Chapter 76, The Fate of the Saiyans. Within this chapter, Minaito reveals that Bardock was the one who saved both himself, Granola's mother, and Granola, in fact, from the invasion that devastated his people and world. Chapter 77, entitled Bardock, Father of Goku. This chapter reveals how Bardock initially saved them and the circumstances that followed leading to Granola's mother, Musli's death. 
Chapter 82, Bardock vs. Gas, revealed through the recordings of his late father's scouter are the events that took place following the tragic death of Muesli and how, in fact, Bardock survived against what we now understand is a viciously formidable foe in Gas. And finally, Chapter 83, Bardock vs. Gas Part 2. This is the chapter everyone has been arguing over and really the majority of arguments are concerning the wording of one line. A wish Bardock asks Minato to make on the Dragon Balls, that wish as translated by Viz being, I'd wish that my sons end up thriving. On its face, it's a rather innocuous request, one that's certainly in line with the modern incarnation of the Bardock character. However, when we pause for a moment and decipher what the implications of such a general wish might be, the issues become unfortunately clear. That potentially, the real reason Goku survived all those years through the original Dragon Ball story would no longer have been due to his skills or approach to life, but instead, the magical guarantee provided by some giant magical space lizard. That he didn't defeat these enemies on his own or with the help of his allies, but he was instead destined to defeat these enemies, as the dragon willed it to be so. Now, when this came out, there were plenty of folks that looked at the Viz translation and saw it as being far more ambiguous than what I've described. I mean, thrive is a very ambiguous word that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this conversation, and so, therefore, it leaves a lot up to interpretation. It could very easily mean that Goku stood no chance of death growing up, and not that, depending on how you interpret the word thrive in this context which is honestly a fair argument. That was until many other experienced Japanese speakers compared the translation from Viz with the original Japanese text and realized this wasn't quite accurate to what was originally said. Perms, a respected and experienced Japanese to English translator and fan of the series, took to Twitter to provide a more accurate and direct translation. That translation reading, I'd wish my sons grew up healthy or well. What was translated ambiguously in the official release is actually rather direct in its original language when translated correctly, and lends credibility, if not certainty, to the concerns levied against that wish prior. That Goku's journey and success in avoidance of death during his childhood up until his death with Raditz wasn't the result of any skill or even his biology at this point, but potentially instead, the will of his father's wish carried out by a magical space lizard. Yes. I know. Cringe. Prior to all of this in 2014, Goku was seen as a child no one thought anything of, someone that was utterly unremarkable that was sent to a world to destroy it, but in an ironic twist of fate ended up doing exactly the opposite and due to those attributes superseded every and all expectations. After 2014, Goku's origin became that of a chosen kid with special parents, sent to Earth to survive and live out his life happily until he's given a chance to show just how special he truly is during the Saiyan and Frieza sagas. And following that, we arrive in 2022, which has seemingly transformed the character even further by not only keeping all of the prior story elements intact from Dragon Ball Minus that I hate so much, but also added that not only was Goku meant to be the way that he was, not only were his parents special, but that Bardock himself requested of someone to make the wish that protected Goku throughout his childhood, ensuring his survival and successful fleeing from Planet Vegeta and sucking tremendous amounts of value from anything he achieved all throughout the early Dragon Ball run, as he was effectively now destined to not only survive, but grow up healthy or well. That all the success we thought he earned during those turbulent 192 early chapters of the story were now utterly meaningless. Now, <laughs> This isn't to say, however, that this is a one-sided discussion online. While the majority feel negatively towards this, there are those that hold out hope that the remaining chapters of this arc could salvage something meaningful while undoing the negatives many fear are on the way. Karthu from Karthu's Dojo posted an interesting theory on his Twitter. One that he admits is a long shot, but is still possible as of writing this video. Once Bardock makes the wish, Minato is left to deliver the wish to the dragon but we never see this happen. And so therein lies the possibility for the message not to have been passed on to the dragon, and for Minato to instead make his own wish for Granola's future. This is a clever use of the existing parameters of the story while remaining in line with the themes of the Granola arc as a whole, but only time will tell if that bears any fruit. My hope is that it does, but as Carthew points out, it's a massive copium play. 
And even if it is copium and it does change the landscape of Dragon Ball for the worse, there is one small upside. Uh, hilariously, this one wish Bardock makes might have actually had the unintended effect of explaining away the main issue I had with the King Piccolo arc in early Dragon Ball, where Goku's heart stops and starts again randomly, buying him the time he needs for Piccolo to be convinced of his death. If this wish actually took place, then I guess we can chalk that momentary heart stoppage to that wish, along with every other near-death experience he has in that part of the story. That is all to say that as of writing this video, the future and troublingly the past of the Dragon Ball story is in a state of limbo. Since 2014, every and all explorations into Bardock's past have yielded less than desirable results that not only alter our impressions of a one-time fan favorite character in Bardock, but also serve to fundamentally and retroactively make everything that came before that much less interesting. With the latest information changing the series so fundamentally, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to make any excuse for this series. There are those out there that think there's still a chance that Dragon Ball Super fixes this and rights these wrongs. However, that is looking to be less and less likely as the weeks and months tick on by, leaving us wondering how a character we love so much like Bardock acted as the vehicle by which Dragon Ball was ruined. Thanks for watching. You are coping, coping and seething. You just can't accept what you see.